What's up guys, my name is Matt. Uh, this video is on behalf of Odds Jam. And today's video will be a beginner's guide on how to create a model. Um, so as, as you can see on my screen, uh, this is gonna be an NFL specific model uh, and we're gonna be using Excel and regression analysis. Um, the one thing and most important thing I wanna preface before I get into this is this is not gonna be uh, a, per, a profitable model that I would suggest people use to bet on future outcomes of games. So uh, at the end of this video, when, when my model is created and, I come, and you know, we see the, um, the, the data that I come up with, I would not advise using that to bet on this week's games. It's more just a beginner's guide to show you the steps necessary. And the hope here is that at the end of the video, um, you'll use those skills to create your own model and determine what stats you think are important. So... Um, and to, to another thing I want to preface is today's model is just going to be about spreads. So it's not going to be doing point totals or even um, like team totals. It's just going to be what the projected margin of victory should be for either the home or away team, whoever my, whatever my model has winning. So, for example, let's say, you know, you see the Titans are five and a half point favorites in that first game. Um, they're, the, <clears throat> they're the away team. And let's say my model has them actually closer to 10 point favorites or excuse me, it has the Jets winning. Uh, well, that would be an opportunity right there. Um, and, you know, if you, if you do create your own model, uh, it's important before you actually bet on it to test it. So um, let's say at the end of today's video, <coughs> excuse me, I, I do really like the model that I come up with. And I'm like, you know what, I actually want, would like to use this to bet. Well, the first thing I would do would be uh, to look at the scores that my model comes up with. And then after, this, after today's games, look at the actual outcomes and then determine how well I did. Um, and let's say I, let's say, as I determine that it wins 60% of the time, well, then that would be an easy way to just, um, you know, over the course of a season, if you win 60% of your spread bets, then you're going to profit. Um, as long as you're over that 52 and a half number because of these, uh, you know, the, the minus 110 VIG that most sports books add, you'll profit if you're over that 52 and a half percent. Um, so the, two, the, the stats that I used is just DVOA for the home and away team. Um, and this is, it's tables easy because if you see the highlighted next to the printer button, um, you can pull this directly into Excel. So you just click this button and it pulls down here and it pulls into Excel, which I already did. So let me change my screen over. Um, okay, let's see. There we go. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so this table, I know it kind of looks intimidating, but um, all it is is just that, that Football Outsiders table in Excel. So it has the team, total DVOA rank, total DVOA the percentage, previous week rank. Win, the win-loss pulls over weird because, like, for whatever reason, the 2-0 doesn't agree with Excel or 3-0, whatever it is. And then it goes from weighted, offense, deep, offense, defense, special teams, all that stuff. Um, so this is the the stats that I'll be using. And then on another tab, I just pulled in all the outcomes so far. So all the way down to the most recent Thursday night game right here, Jaguars at Bengals. Um, and then I did in column R right here. It's just a margin. So if it's positive, it means that the home team won. If it's negative, it means that the away team won. And then in column S and T, it's just a home team and away team DVOA. So I'll just say right off the bat, a model that only has two stats is, is not going to be good enough moving forward. Uh, you're going you're to need a lot more um, to actually, you know, to, to make profitable uh, bets and, and sharp analysis and stuff like that. But like I said, this is just a beginner's guide to show you the skills necessary. Um, so um, to pull, all, so basically to pull in the home and away team DVOA, I just did an index match formula. Uh, you can also do a VLOOK up here. Um, I won't go into how those formulas work. It's just that all I did was I pulled uh, column H from the total the team DVOA ratings overall. Column H is weighted DVOA. Um, and then I pulled it for the home and away team. So everywhere was Tampa Bay Bucks. You see in N2 right here, this is it pulls the Bucks. Every time you, it says it's all Cowboys, it pulled the Cowboys. And then Falcons, Eagles going forward. Um, negative is bad, positive is good. That's all you really need to know. Um, so once you have all that pulled in, you're going to go to the data tab up here. Click data, click data analysis, and there's a, you see there's like a bunch of different ones. Uh, you just want to click regression. Uh, let me take these out. And uh, so the input Y range, this is going to be our margin. So um, this is going to be R, R1 all the way down to R50. 
um, and then the X range, this is going to be the stats that we want to use to see if there's a correlation between um, the X and the Y range. This is going to be home and away team DVOA. Down to 50 again. So basically, uh, what we're doing here is we want to say, all right, so look at the numbers between S and T, home and away team DVOA, and see if there's a correlation between margin. That's basically all we're doing. So the more stats we do, the better chance we'll get to find if there's a correlation or not. Um, you want to make sure you have labels. You want to click, have the new worksheet. That just means when you click OK, it'll open in a new worksheet. And you want to make sure you have residuals. Uh, that's important. So once you have all that, this looks good. You click OK. And let's see what we got here. So I know this might look a little confusing. Um, basically, uh, the important stuff, and I'll highlight to show which ones are important. This column, this column, these three, and these three. Okay, so, whoops, these are supposed to be high. Okay, so the first one, this R square. Um, this is just a percentage and it goes up to one, so the higher the better. It just shows um, how many times between the X value was there a correlation with the Y value. Um, in this case, X was our margin, Y was uh, the deep home and away team DVOA. So determine that 50% of the time um, there, was a, there, was a, there was a relation. Uh, so the higher the better. So 50% is actually not bad just for two stats. Um, I, you know, I, I, like I said, I wouldn't use this moving forward. Like I'm not going to use this model and bet on the outcomes of it. But 50% uh, isn't bad. The next one is this. It's called significance F. Uh, you just want this number to be below 0.05. Uh, I don't need to go into exactly what it means, but as you can see here, it's like points. Um, if I change this to a number and I bring the decimal places out, wrong way, it's below 0.05, obviously. Same thing with the p-value. Um, as long as the p-value is below 0.05, that means you have a good profitable model. So the intercept um, actually... Um, this one did, did not, but these two are good. And the, the intercept is basically, um, in this case, it's the home, it, basically in this, in this team, it's the home team advantage. So um, normally you hear that the home team is worth three points. My model only found that it's worth 0.44. And it makes sense because if you look at the, if you highlight the margin and you look at the bottom of the screen, it looks like the home team only won by an average of 0.08. Um, and they only won by a total of 50 points. So, um, excuse me, 39 points in a total of 50 games. So that is kind of where the, um, that 0.44 is coming from. So basically, uh, the home teams have won by a total of 0 .0, 0 .0, 0 0.8, but my model determined that the home team is actually only worth uh, almost half a point. Um, and then the home team and away team, this just shows, um, uh, this the coefficient just kind of shows the relation between uh, the DVOA and like um, like the, the the number of stats. It, it, I'll show you um, how we use this, but basically you just you just need to pull uh, columns A and B, um, and the home, just the labels just help you kind of pull it. And the coefficient is what we'll use in our formula. So you pull you copy and paste these numbers. You go back to your um, games. So you see like starting in row fifty one is where we have all the future games. So I'll just copy this. Doesn't matter where you copy it. You just make you need to make sure you have the data and. I'll show, you, uh, I'll show you what formula we're pulling. So basically, we're going to do equals intercept, so just the home advantage. So um, the Jets as the home team get a point, point 0.5 point advantage plus. Then you want to do our coefficient multiplied by the, actual, um, by the actual team's DVOA. So in this case, we're going to do the home team DVOA multiplied by what the home team's DVOA actually is, which is going to be um, S51 for the Jets. Plus, and you do the same thing for the away team. And that's it. Pretty simple. Um, I guess I had a typo somewhere. I forgot to add the, I forgot to add a formula right here, or parentheses, and we're, we're good. So, looks like my model determined that the Titans are should be six and a half point favorites. And if we go back to um, DraftKings, and we want to look at... Where is that? Oh, I showed you the wrong tab. I, you wanted to see, excuse me, um, this one. Um, so it looks like the Titans are actually six point favorites, but my model has them, if you go back to that, has them at six and a half point favorites. Um, so 
you know, there's some, some value there, not a ton. Um, and if you want to drag this down for the rest of the games, all you have to do is, um, so you want to click F4 on any of the stats that you don't want to change. So we don't want the coefficient to change. We don't want the um, home and away team DVA to change. So, um, and I'll show you what that means. So basically, if you look at the formula at the top, you see the uh, dollar signs before and after all the Z numbers, right? This just means that no matter what, those, those rows aren't changing when you drag the formula down. So if I go down to the Chiefs game, looks like the Chiefs should only, are only one, and a half, one point favorites based on my model. Um, but you'll see like it still stayed at Z51, Z52, and Z53, but the S and T changed. So if I scroll all the way down, there you go. So it looks like, funny enough, the Washington football team should be 14 and a half point favorites against the Falcons. Um, looks like the Broncos should, are, should be nine point favorites. And that makes sense if you look at DVOA. Um, like the football team, if you go back to our DVOA, it looks like they're 24 and the Falcons, or excuse me, 23 and the Falcons are 32. So the difference between the two teams DVOA determined that the football team should actually be uh, 14 point favorites. Um, I don't think they'll win by 14, but that just kind of shows, um, the analysis you get in there. Um, and, um, and yeah, so that's basically it. I mean, if you want to add more stats, which I, which you can do, um, you just, when you run your analysis, uh, I think there should be one more there. Maybe not. Um, but when you run your analysis, you instead of highlighting only S and T, you highlight all of these. And when you look at your analysis, there'll be more. Excuse me. Nope. There'll be there'll be more data down here that you copy, and it just means that you have a longer formula that you create. But like I said, I um, I don't. I personally don't think this. I mean, using only T DVOA is not good enough to determine uh, the outcome of a game. Like if you looked at the Eagles Cowboys game. The Eagles had a higher DVOA and they got curb stomped. And if you look at the table, really good teams like the Chiefs, uh, who are probably one of the best teams in the NFL, only have 15. Packers are only have 20. And then if you look at the top, Panthers are two, Browns are three, Cardinals are four, Broncos are five. Like if at the end of the year, those probably the Tampa Bay is only down to seven. If you look at at the end of the year, those teams probably won't be at the top of the DVOA. But since we're only three weeks into the season, that's why it's so much different. Um, but but yeah, so that's basically it. It's uh, I know it can kind of seem daunting, but I would suggest starting off doing exactly what I did and just pulling home in away team DVOA and then um, and go from there. Just it's important to learn the steps on how to do it, and then the more comfortable you get with it, the more stats you can pull in, and the more you can make it your own. So if you don't like DVOA, don't use it. If you want to use something else, like the Pro Football Reference has their own analysis, advanced stats. If you want to use uh, some other stuff, like if you have a subscription with Port, Sport Radar, that would be perfect. Um, but yeah, this is, like I said, this was just a beginner's guide. Um, I wouldn't bet on the Washington football team to win by 14 or anything like that. But hey, if they do, then maybe this is something um, that we should look, you know, I can look I can look into moving forward. I would just need to add a lot more stats to it. Um, but yeah, so I hope that makes sense to everybody. If you have any questions, um, you can find me on Twitter at let my last name, Modi, M-O-D-I underscore sports. So it's uh, at Modi underscore sports. Or if you feel like doing email, I'm, I'm very responsive with my Gmail at Modi Sports Analytics at gmail.com. Um, so that's all I got for you. Thanks for watching and uh, happy betting.